I think we are ready to go to the next phase of uh, our celebration today. Y'all are blessed, aren't you? Yes. Let's just say this. I am, y'all ready? Say this with me. I am greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved by you. I am the disciple who Jesus loves. I am my father's favorite child. I am the apple of his eye. I am well-pleasing in his sight. I receive the love that my father has for me. Everything I do and touch shall be blessed because I am the beloved. I am loved, righteous, blessed, prosperous, redeemed, forgiven, talented, creative, confident, secure, disciplined, focused, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, accepted and approved, not average, not mediocre, holy, flawless, without blemish, blameless, and free from accusation. I am a child of the Most High God. I will become all I was created to be in Jesus' name. Listen, y'all, you are going to become all that you were created to be. You will fulfill, I declare and proclaim that you will discover, if you haven't already, and fulfill God's destiny plan for your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Y'all ready for the word? Yes. We're going to, um, well, before we, we jump in, um, I want to encourage you, those of you that are watching online, welcome Summit Nation. Some of y'all ha haven't seen it in a while, um, but you you locking in and you're tuning in online, um, and uh, I'm thankful for you, even though that I don't uh, see you. Uh, I'm with you in spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so um, just come on back whenever it feels right for you in your heart. And um, it's, it's good here. Praise the Lord. And um, we, we believe God's best for your life. Thank you for your prayers, financial support for those that I've seen and those that I have not seen. Um, I, I just thank God for his faithfulness that he sustained us and caused us to thrive in the midst of a pandemic in the world. Amen. Let's just give God praise for that. Amen. He causes us to thrive in the midst of trouble in the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are blessed. You're blessed. Thank you, Lord. He's sustaining you. He's causing you not to just maintain but to advance and to increase. The favor of God is on you. The world, see, we're not like the world. People in the world looking at 2020, man, I can't wait till this over. Just uh, people, oh, man, just, you know, 2020, boy, I can tell you what, you can expect anything. I mean, uh, any, any kind of bad thing, just uh, people are, are just talking about, just negative about 2020. But that's not us. We have a different language. We win. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We're free. Glory to God. We've been made free. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, um, and, and you know, I haven't talked a lot about giving. Haven't hardly said anything about, help. make sure y'all give. Oh, man, you know, because we... We really need help, um, and we do need help, but um, I've never begged, I never have, and never will. This is the Lord's ministry, and he knows how to sustain it. Amen. God takes care of his own. He takes care of Summit Church, uh, our, our ministry. He takes care of you. Hallelujah. We've got, we got some brighter lights up in here just, just now. Amen. At least coming on me. But that's okay. If that makes everything better, that's cool. All right, I can handle it. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, so everybody that's, that's watching, I want to say this. Um, dial in and, and, and eliminate any distraction, okay? 
Uh, if you got to go to the restroom, I mean, if you just got to go, do it. I'm not going to be up here long. You can hold it. It's like when you're in a movie. <laughs> Amen. Try to uh, refrain from cooking and, and, and all that kind of stuff and just lock in, okay? Um, my dad used to say that, uh, he said, I'm going to tell you like Elizabeth Taylor. Some of y'all young folks don't know who, who that is. Um, he said, I'm, I'm going to tell you like Elizabeth Taylor told her, told her husband, I'm not going to hold you long. <laughs> no, no, he, no, no, he said, I'm not going to keep you long. I messed that up. <laughs> I messed that up. I'm not going to keep you long. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, focus, lock in. I'm going to do a Joe Osteen today. I think I, I'll start with something funny. What did one eye say to the other? Something, no, no, okay, I'm about to mess that up. <laughs> what did one eye say to the other? I'm not as good as Joe. He said, between us, something smell. <laughs> All right, so... I want to encourage you to get the app, get the Summit Church app, and um, today we got some fill in the blanks in the app today. So you can run to the app store, go to uh, your Android, uh, God forbid you have Android, go to the Android store. But if you, uh, if, if you are saved and have an iPhone, then you're going to go to the um, app store, you know, whatever phone you got, go to the app store, search for Summit Church. Indiana, okay? And uh, you can dial in the announcements, all kind of good things going on today. I'm not going to read them, but uh, I am going to highlight one thing because it's, it's, it's urgent. And um, so act right away because I'm going to extend some grace. First of all, well, let me say this. Um, we, uh, did y'all enjoy those ribs from Veterans Grill? Yeah. Last week, praise God, we ate ribs, chicken. Some of y'all had the veggie plate. That's what Gary and Nita are going to do today. Cause so, yeah, actually, we're going to have some uh, surprise for you. We're going to have ribs today. If you're in Indy. <laughs> so Indy campus, you smell that? You should be able to smell it. But uh, anyway, uh, thank God for uh, Antoine and LaShonda have they have ribs for you, Veterans Grill. Um, thank them for, for that good food. And, uh, oh, just tell Antoine to save me a plate. Send it back. Okay? Um, so, all right. That's just personal. Okay, but, but y'all enjoy an Indy, and I want to welcome the Indy campus. Okay, so the, the um, uh, one announcement I want to highlight is that, um, as you know, We've got a, a new Bible course. Some of you, if you're watching for the first time, we've got an online Bible course. You can, you, can, you can enroll in this Bible course. You can take this Bible course in your, in your pajamas, in, in your slippers, in your house coat. Praise the Lord. So it's called Foundation. It begins very quickly, very soon, almost a little over a week, um, October 25th. We've got a 50%, we had a 50% off, it expired at midnight. But because I'm a grace guy, we're going to extend that one more day. So you can still get, on, get in on 50% off. There's a link on the announcements, part of, uh, or, or on the announcements on the app, that's the easy way to get to it, so you don't have to type it in. Just click, click on it, and uh, it'll take you right there. And go ahead. I encourage you to get in on it. it it's a foundation of um, the gospel of grace, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The gospel that Paul preached. We're going to really dive into that and focus in on that. There's... Uh, assessment questions at the end 
of each lesson. Once you answer those questions, you'll be able to move on to the next lesson. Okay, so I put a lot into this so that it would be a blessing to you. So um, if you want to know, if you don't have the app, you want to know how to get there, just go to training.summitministries.tv forward slash foundation. All right. So let me teach you some internet speak. Anything after the for, like dot com slash anything after the forward slash is called a slug. Everybody say a slug. slug. So the slug is foundation. So, but it's training. Everybody say training. training. Dot, dot summit ministries dot tv slash foundation. All right, let's dive in. Hebrews chapter five. And we'll look at verse 13. Every, for everyone who partakes only of milk, I'm going to show you how to get off of milk today. Everyone who partakes only of milk. What do I mean milk? The milk of the word of God. And we're going to get into how to get off of milk. And it's very easy. Okay. And the bottom line is, let me just give you a, uh, a little hint here. Stop working. It's because, because see, the, the, the key to the Christian life is resting. Resting in the finished work of Jesus. We're going to talk about the word of righteousness today. Um, to be made righteous is ha to have right standing with God. You see, there's so many people talking about, well, you, you, better, you, you, you better make sure you're right with God. You make sure you've got to do these things. And man, make sure you you right with God. Are you right with God? Are you right with God? Are you right with God? As if you're made right with God by your working or by your doing or by you earning it. Okay? But we don't obtain righteous righteousness by our doing. And we're going to get into that. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Everybody say word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Now, this, is, this implies uh, in uh, one translation, this is New King James, ESV says, for he's a child. If you want to, to uh, get out of the, the milk stage or the child stage or the baby stage, the key is becoming skilled in the word of righteousness. Understanding what righteousness is and what righteousness means. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 10. It says, for with the heart. Now, see, you don't work for it. I'm going to give you several righteousness facts, and I want you to just listen. This is going to be like a class today. It's always like a class because I'm a teacher. For, one, for with the heart, one believes and is justified. The word justified, when you see the word just or justified, it means to declare righteous. So with your heart, you believe and is justified. For with the heart one believes and is justified. New King James says, for with the heart one believes to righteousness. See, you don't, you don't work to become righteous. You be, you, you're righteous by believing. And we call this faith righteousness. What's faith righteousness? Every day believe you're righteous by faith. So you're righteous, say, I'm righteous, I'm righteous. by my believing. By my it's, not, it's not what you do. Now, look at Romans 5, 17. I'm going to give you the definition of, of righteousness in a sec. For if by, for if because of one man's trespass, that's Adam, We'll talk about this a little bit later in detail. 
if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man. That spiritual death that reigned through the one man, Adam. And through spiritual death came sickness and disease and poverty and other mess. Okay. Death reigned through that one man because of his trespass. Much more. Everybody say much more. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. The, I like that. See, it's emphasis on the fact that it's a gift because you don't even have to put the word free in there. But the Holy Spirit saw fit to put free gift. I mean, if it's a gift, you know it's free. The fact that it's a gift tells you you don't work for it. But he puts double emphasis on that free gift. He wants you to know that it's free. Of course. Of course it's free. And because of, it's because of what Jesus did. So you're, you're right with God. Let me give you this definition, a further definition of righteousness. It, it is basically right standing with God. And it means that you are right with God, listen, not guilty, approved, accepted, and well-pleasing in his sight. I like this. As you ought to be. You, you are as you ought to be. Say, I am right with God. I'm not guilty. I am approved. I am accepted. I am well-pleasing in his sight. I am as I ought to be. That is how God sees you right now. Oh, you got to be, you make sure you're right with God. We're right with God because of Jesus. It's not by anything you do. And do you know, this is such good news, and you know what? Some people cannot ha handle the good news. It's so good, it sounds too good to be true. You mean we don't have to earn God's favor? We don't have to earn God's blessing? No. You mean we don't have to do anything to be blessed? No, no. That's too easy for some people, and some people cannot handle it. It's just got, they got to put their hands in it. They feel like they got to do something to be blessed. No, it's faith righteousness. You are right with God by your believing, not by your doing. By the time I get finished with this, you won't be able to misunderstand this. But just go ahead and receive uh, what God has for you. And he's made you righteous. See, you're righteous and you, you actually reign in life. I want to go back to Romans 5, 17. Those who receive the abundance of grace and, and, and the free gift of righteousness will reign in life through Jesus Christ. See, when you reign, you know what that means? Sin won't reign. When, when you reign, see, because it's receiving the, well, that's just too much grace. It's the abundance of grace. It's too much grace that causes you to reign in life. Romans 6.14 says, sin will not have dominion over you because you're not under the law, but you're under grace. Say, I'm under grace. So, see, when you really understand what grace is, and grace is really, it's not a message, it's a person, and his, his name is Jesus. When you really understand what grace is all about, and you receive this abundance of grace, I mean, when you understand that it, you, you, sin won't have dominion over you when you're under grace, when you understand that, you say, man, give me all the grace. I, can, I, I mean, I want all the grace. I want, I want abundance of grace. And it, it causes you to reign in life. 
not just over sin, but see, it causes you to reign over sickness. It causes you to reign over poverty. See, when you reign, sin doesn't reign. When you reign, sickness doesn't reign. When you reign, poverty doesn't reign. You reign, hallelujah. And it's not through your effort. It's through Jesus Christ. See, you reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. It's his obedience, as we're going to see. It's actually a couple verses down. We'll get to that. But it's his obedience that makes you righteous. Pay attention because I'm going to ask you some test questions. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are right with God, not guilty, approved, accepted, well-pleasing in his sight as you ought to be. Actually, let's go there now. Let's go a couple verses down, verse, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, we talked about him earlier a few moments ago. Who's that one man? Adam. Adam. His disobedience in the garden when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we were made sinners. Now, I want you to focus on, let's do a little bit of a word study. And uh, made sinners, made righteous. See, so you're not a sinner because of what you do. You're a sinner because you inherited the sin nature from Adam. Because you see, it's his obedience that made you a sinner. It's not what you do that makes you a sinner. See, you're not a sinner because of what you do. You are a sinner because of how you were born. You were born a sinner because you inherited the sin nature from Adam because of his, that one man, Adam's disobedience. You were made sinners. So, actually, what, what Paul is trying to, trying to tell you is how righteous you are. And that there's nothing you can do to change your righteous status. Hallelujah. That's, that's his point. Is there's, no, there's no bad thing you can do to change your righteous status. If you could do some bad thing, say some bad thing, do some bad thing, to change your righteous status, you know what that would mean? I'm going to explain it to you. But that would mean that what Adam did was more powerful than what Jesus did on the cross in his finished work. Why do I say that? Because, think about it. You were made sinners by Adam's disobedience. Okay? It, it wasn't anything you do, right? So, you had a status of being a sinner. So no, good, so no good thing you did could change your sinner status. Right? No good thing you do when you're a sinner, there's no good thing you can do to change your sinner status because you were made a sinner because of Adam's disobedience. So if that's the case, it says, so also by one man's obedience, one man's disobedience made us sinners, also by one man's obedience, who's that one man? That's Jesus, his obedience on the cross. See, it's not your obedience that makes you righteous. It's Jesus' obedience that makes you righteous. It's Je say, it's Jesus' obedience that made me righteous. So, when you were a sinner and there was no good thing you did that could change your sinner status, now that Jesus made you righteous, what bad thing can you do to change your righteous status? See, it's giving us a comparison here. You were made righteous. There was nothing that you did to cause you to become righteous. It was Jesus' obedience. So no bad thing you do can change 
your righteous status. As, as a sinner, your goodness couldn't change your badness. As a believer, as a righteous person, your badness can't change your goodness. Okay, time for a test question. Let me bring up the question here. Y'all ready for it? Whose sin made you a sinner? Okay. How many sins does it take when you're a sinner? How many, so how many sins does it take to, for you to become a sinner? Zero. Why? Because you were born that way. You were a sinner by birth, not by behavior. Next question. Whose obedience made you righteous? Ah, Jesus' obedience. So how many righteous acts does it take to become righteous? Zero, because you were born that way. Thank you, Jesus. We are righteous by the new birth, not by behavior. Recap. How many sins did it take for you to become a, a sinner? Zero. Zero. We were born that way. You were a sinner by birth, not by behavior. How many righteous acts does it take for you to become righteous? Zero. You were reborn that way. Glory to God. Amen. We are, say, I'm righteous by birth, not by behavior. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I'm preaching myself happy up in here. Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't have this next verse queued up, but just to give you a further, further word study here. Um, in verse 20, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the sin might abound. This is the very next verse. Now, let me just stop and say this. If what, if what Christ did and what Adam did were on an equal level, we can see from, from this. I mean, if they're on, it's just on an equal level. There's nothing that you can do to change your righteous status because there's nothing that you could do to change your sinner status. If they're on an equal level, then there's nothing you can do. You can sin a thousand times a day. Now, here's where people disconnect. It's yas, amen, till I say this. You can sin a thousand times, and you're still the righteousness of God in Christ. If you don't understand that, you're unskilled in the word of righteousness, and you're a child. But see, when you understand you can sin a thousand times, and you're still the righteousness of God. Now, some people, oh, man, are you telling people to sin? I'm not... When did I say that? My point is, is how righteous you are. Well, see, that Pastor Genesis, he just makes light of sin. No, I'm making much of Jesus. I'm not making light of sin. I'm making much of Jesus. I just, I, see, you got to listen to the whole thing. I said that sin will not have dominion over you when you're under grace. When you understand how righteous you are, when you receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, you don't want to sin. It's not your nature to do so. Actually, if you go on to the next uh, chapter, it tells you, um, shall we sin that grace may abound? Paul said, certainly not. How can we? Because you've got a new nature. You, see, you, you've been reborn. Did you miss that part? You've been reborn. You've got a righteous nature. See, a dog's nature is to bark. He can't help it. A cat's going to be at a meow. Kids, a, a, a pig is going to wallow in the mud. That's because that's the nature in which to do so, right? 
Well, a believer, is not, our nature is not to sin. It's not that we can't. We're not perfect. And we'll mess up sometimes. But it doesn't change your righteous status. Who hallelujah. So it's not, it's not your doing of anything that makes you righteous. Now watch, watch this next verse. Who, now, if it's on an equal level, not, the, the, you, you get that? If it's on an equal level, what Adam did and what Christ did, if it's on an equal level, nothing you can do can change your righteous status because you were made that way when you were born again, just like there's nothing you can do to change your sinner status. I'm not making this up. This is what Paul said. But what I'm, what I'm here to tell you is it's not on, on an equal level. What Christ did far exceeded the mess that Adam got us into. Because it says in the next verse, moreover, the, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Okay, now I don't have this in, in your notes, but I, I, I wanted to throw this in because it, it fits. I mean, it, I mean, it goes together. So watch this. There's two words for abounded. Now, y'all got Bibles. Y'all got smartphones. If it's smart, it's got a Bible. Pull it up, Romans 5, 20. Y'all can look up some stuff. Amen. So abounded is there twice, but there are two different words. Actually, abounded much more. Little Greek study today, okay? Abounded where where sin abounded. Say sin abounded. abounded. Grace abounded much more. Okay. The first word abounded is pleonazo. Abounded much more. That second word abounded along with much more, all that's one Greek word. Abounded much more. It's an entirely different Greek word. It's hooper parasiuo. That sounds sounds deep. That hooper. It's a combination of two Greek words: hooper and parasiuo. Hooper is where we get our English word hyper. And it's interesting because people call call what I teach hyper grace. I don't get offended by that. It is hyper grace. Grace is on it's grace on steroids. (laughs) Actually, hyper grace is biblical because he is too much grace that causes you to reign. (laughs) <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Hooper, parasio. Okay, so Hooper is where we get our English word uh, hyper, all right? Now, the word pleonazo, the first word for abounded, where sin abounded, parasio, it means to increase. I want you to listen to this. So where sin increased, Grace, who prepares see you? What does that mean? All right? It's a combination of two Greek words. Hyper, which means over, beyond, and above. Parasio means... Oh man. Y'all ready for this? Super abundant in quantity or superior in quality. Again, about it much more. That phrase is one Greek word, hooper parasiuo, a combination of two Greek words, hooper, which means over, beyond, and above. Parasiuo means super abundant in quantity quantity or superior in quality. What does that mean? What Adam did and what Jesus did were not on an equal level. What Jesus did far exceeded what Jesus did in his finished work on the cross far exceeded what Adam did when he sinned in the garden. 
because where sin abounded increase, grace was over, beyond, above, super abundant in quantity, superior in quality. Somebody shout amen. amen. This is what we're living under right now. Grace super abounded. Say grace is super abounding in my life. Okay, all those Greek words and definite. What does all that mean? If grace is super abounding in your life, you reign in life. You don't reign in life by your doing, by your effort. It's by receiving. Y'all getting some out of this? Man, this is good teaching. All right. You're not guilty. Say, I'm not guilty. I'm approved, accepted, well-pleasing in his sight, as I ought to be. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. I don't even have my clicker today, and y'all keeping up back there, Whoever, whoever's doing that. Those slides back there, you know, you're doing a great job. I forgot my clicker. Y'all keeping up. I'm tough to follow sometimes. Got to go back and forth a little bit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's good to have a good team. Amen. You want to be a part of the team? All right, y'all can be a part of the team. Thank you, Lord. We got a lot going on. We got scriptures that... Or for the people in person, and we got scriptures going across the screen for people online. There's a lot going on uh, behind the scenes, and, and we need help. Just pause the commercial, you know, like you're watching a YouTube video, and, and you're getting into it, and you get erupted. All of a sudden, they're, they're popping these commercials up. <laughs> Amen. So a uh, little commercial here, praise God. Um, we, need, we need help here at Summit. It's almost like we're, we're church planting again. After all these years, amen, we, got, we need people to show up in person so that we're able to uh, broadcast and do these live streams. It takes a lot uh, uh, to do what we do, praise the Lord. We need um, singers and uh, we need band. We need, I mean, amen, we don't have a full band yet, but, but see, um, y'all may be out there and you want to be a part of it. And you say, man, I, I'd, I'd like to be on that stage. Well, come on. Come on. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, um, all right. He, he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin. Jesus never committed any acts of sin. Everything he did on the cross, it, it was um, a substitutionary thing. All right. Um, Jesus became sin for us. We were identified with Jesus and everything he did, everything that Jesus did on the cross, he did it for you. And he didn't just die for you, he died as you. He became, he became sin. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. Watch this that we might become. It was an exchange. Our sin for his righteousness. Can you see it? It's his obedience that did it. It's not your obedience that makes you righteous. It's his obedience that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The Amplified says, for our sake, he made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin so that in and through him we might become endued with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be, approved and acceptable 
and in right relationship with him by his goodness. See, it's all because of what Jesus did. We're that because of Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, oh foolish Galatians. Now, Galatians was written because these, uh, these are the Galatian church was a Gentile church, a non-Jewish church. Okay, and they, they were saved by believing in Jesus. But then these Judaizers came in and said, well, you also need to keep the law. You need Jesus plus the law. No, the gospel is, is Jesus plus nothing. Say the gospel, the gospel is Jesus plus nothing. Jesus plus nothing. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has cast this evil spell on you? We're looking at this in the New Living. For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. In other words, you saw it. They got revelation of it. He said, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by, by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because what? You believe the message you heard about Christ. See, that's what makes you righteous. Believe in what you hear. Believing the good news that Jesus took your sins on the cross, past, present, and future. Look at verse 3. How foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Because some people believe that, okay, you get saved by grace, but then you live your Christian life by your effort, and by your behavior, by your doing. No, Colossians 2.6 says, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. What does that mean? How did you receive Christ? By grace, through faith, not of works. So you receive Christ that way, that's how you ought to walk. As you receive Christ, so walk in him. Look at Philippians chapter 3. You got to look out for the dogs. Watch out for those dogs. <laughs> he calling these Judaizers dogs, man. He said, those people who do evil, he calling it evil. When somebody tries to put, when somebody tries to put you under the law, it's evil. So watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilizers who say you must be circus, circumcised to be saved. For we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. He's talking about circumcision in the Spirit. Watch this. We, will, we, we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. See, I put no confidence in human effort. I rely on what Jesus did for me on the cross. I rest in the finished work of Jesus. I know y'all just want to fill in these blanks. Okay, I'm going to give them to you. Ephesians 4.24 says that you put on the new man which was created according to God. See, that, that new man in your spirit was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You were created. Say, I was created in true righteousness and holiness. Now, what he's saying is, what does he mean to put on a new man? In your spirit, you were born again. Put that new nature on in your mind. Renew your mind to that finished work. Put on a new man. Put him on in your mind. Righteousness facts. I got nine of them. Y'all ready? Okay. You got the app. This is fill in the blank. Okay. Number one, you become righteous 
when you are born again. Number two, you're made righteous by your believing, not by your works. I love this one. Number three, you will not be more righteous in heaven than you are right now. You won't be any more righteous in heaven than you are right now. You will never be any more righteous. Not next week, not in three years. <laughs> and when you understand that, man, when you understand this, you get out of childhood. Because being mature in Christ is being skilled in this word of righteousness. You're not going to be any more righteous when you walk with Jesus for 10 more years. You'll never be any more righteous than you are right now. You are as righteous as you're ever going to be. Don't underestimate that point. Because, see, this is something that you have to fight. The fight of faith for every day. Because you've got to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Every day you, you need to lay a hold of it. To receive, receive, it means to lay a hold of. It's lambano. It means to lay a hold of, receive. When you, every, every day you need, to, you need to believe I'm righteous by faith, not by my behavior. Because you're going to look in the mirror sometimes and you're not going to look very righteous. And sometimes you're not going to feel very righteous. Amen? Amen. So you got to believe that you're righteous by faith and not by your behavior. You got to believe that. Yes. Because you're going to look in the mirror sometime and see evidence to the contrary. So you got to remind yourself of this all the time. Because the, nev the devil is never going to stop the accusing voice in your head. Amen? Yes. Number four. You have the same righteousness as Jesus has. Ooh. Created in true righteousness and holiness. Number five, righteousness is not a goal to be achieved, but a gift to be received. Righteousness, number six, righteousness is not something you deserve. Boy, oh, isn't that good? We don't get what we deserve. We get what Jesus did for us by his obedience. Jesus made it happen for you. Number seven, you can't earn it or work for it. Number eight, you don't grow in righteousness. How can you grow in it? It's a gift. It's a, see, leads us into number nine. Very important. Righteousness, we're going to continue with righteousness next week. I've got some more to say, but you don't grow in righteousness, number nine. You, righteousness is not a, a thing like, like faith or love. Righteousness is a position. Righteousness is not a state of doing, but a state of being that you are born into. Righteousness is a position. It's not a thing. It's a state of being, not a state of doing. It's a part of your nature. You were born that way. Anybody receive Christ? What about the rest of you? you? Receive Christ, then you're righteous. It's a part of your nature. Righteousness is a position that you are placed in the moment you accepted Christ. Lord, we thank you and praise you. 
Hallelujah. Just give him praise for all that he's done for you. All that Jesus has done for you on the cross. You were made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your finished work on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord. If you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you may say, well, I want that, that righteousness. I want, I want what Jesus did for me on the cross. How do I obtain it? By being born again. You instantly become the righteousness of God in Christ. You don't work for it. You just receive it by, by making Jesus the Lord of your life. If you're watching today, those of you that are here in person, if, if, you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, how do I do that? Just by saying yes to Jesus, by, by, by saying, yes, I receive what you did for me on the cross. By confessing with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Nothing you work for, nothing you earn. You just receive what Jesus did for you on the cross. He already finished the work. All that's left for you to do is receive him. It's by God's grace that you've been saved. It's not anything that you do. It's the gift of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life and you want to make him Lord today, I want you to pray this prayer. Uh, just repeat this after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for me. Thank you, Jesus, for your finished work on the cross. Hallelujah. I confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. Jesus, you're my Lord. God, you're my Father. I am born again. I'm a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to raise your hand. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer, if you have your hand up, you may put your hand down. If, if you're watching online and you prayed that, that prayer for the very first time, I want to say welcome to the family of God. You are a child of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. I've got something I want to send to you to help get your new life with the Lord off to a good start and also will it help, it will explain uh, what happened to you when you prayed that prayer. So if you prayed that prayer for the first time, what I'd like for you to do is um, just send us a message. Um, if you are watching on our online platform, there's a, a live prayer button. And if you click that live prayer button, you'll enter into a private chat area with one of our volunteers, they'll take your information. Just tell them, hey, I prayed that prayer um, after pastor, and please send me what he's talking about. And uh, just tell them you prayed the prayer, and we'll, we'll get it to you. We'll know to send it to you, and we'll get it, get it to you right away. And then um, if you're watching on Facebook, just message us, and we'll get that information to you. If you're watching on YouTube, just send us um, a message, an email at um, don't put your email down. Um, in the comments section, just send us an e uh, email at uh, summitchurchatme.com, I think. <laughs> so yeah, uh, summitchurchatme.com, and we'll get that information to you. I want to say congratulations. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Let's give God praise for <laughs> everybody to receive <laughs> Jesus as Lord today. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven and is settled in you right now. Praise God. This teaching helps to get you established 
in righteousness. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, so we're going to partake of communion. Glory be to God. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. Your salvation was finished. Your healing was finished. Your prosperity was finished. Thank you, Jesus. Your righteousness was finished. Jesus became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I am, I am. The, righteousness of God the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I'm approved. I'm, approved. I'm, accepted. I'm accepted. I am not guilty. I am, am well-pleasing in his sight. I am, as, I am as I ought to be. All is well with me. Because all is well with Jesus. It is well. It is well. Oh, yeah, I remember in the Baptist day they'd sing that song. I, I can't. I can't sing it, but it is well. And then, then the then the, the bass would come. It is well. With my soul, with my soul. Any old school people remember that? Yeah. It is well, it is well with my soul. <laughs> it is well. If y'all don't remember anything else, you remember Pastor tried to sing today? But uh, just remember what I, what I said, amen, hallelujah, it is well. It's well because of Jesus. And that ain't no joke. Somebody said, well, we do. yeah, but look, at, look how you behave, it's well. It's well with me because it's well with Jesus. Jesus makes everything all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As, say, as Jesus is, as Jesus so, is. Am so am I. Mm. Say, there's nothing wrong with me. Wrong with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who his own self bore our sins in his body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness. By Jesus' stripes you were healed. If you're sick in your body today, <clears throat> go ahead and receive. The headache is gone. Somebody told me in a meeting this week, they said that, uh, Pastor, I've been, they've been around a long time. I never heard you call out a hip. I don't even remember doing it, but a few weeks ago, said I called out a hip, and he got healed. That hip had been bothering for over a year. I don't know how long. I don't remember how long, but um, so just go ahead and receive it. I called something out, and and that's you. Go ahead and, and take it, take it, take it. That headache's leaving you. Some of y'all didn't rest well last night. You've been having trouble sleeping for a while. Been suffering from insomnia. But tonight, you're going to get the best sleep that you've had in years. Now, don't estimate the, underestimate the power of the Word of God. I've had some people that, they're not, they're not church people, but they came uh, one time, I didn't call out insomnia or anything, but see, the Lord knows what you're dealing with. I didn't even call it out, and they texted me and said, my wife and I slept better than we've had in a long time. What did they do? They just came, 
came to church and went home. Not even church people. But that's the effect. I want you to see the effect of the word of God. This is not a religious service. The word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This word has the ability to do all kind of stuff. The word and the Holy Spirit working together, whoo, all kind of stuff be jumping off. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Man, the power of the word of God. If you could see the angels. If you could see the angels floating around in here, pouring out healing and pouring oil and pouring, pouring into you what you need. Man, if we could see into the spirit world, man, y'all will be, be coming to the building on Tuesdays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, by, it's by the spirit of God. I remember one time, was anybody here when Creflo Dollar was here? And man, this one guy, he got so bothered because um, he'd come here when Dr. Thompson was here and, uh, and he happened to be at Dr. Thompson's house. Um, but he flew with him here. And he sat right back there and he wasn't here to say anything. All right? And um, I didn't ask him, did he want to say anything? I just wasn't led to ask him to do anything, and he didn't ask me. So, and Dr. Thompson didn't say nothing to him, and Dr. Thompson didn't call him up. So, I'm not going to call him up. After service, this one guy came up to me with this concerned look on his face. He said, Are you Cat Creflo Dollar here? And you haven't said anything? I said, well, no, I, you know, I don't remember what I said to him, but <laughs> anyway, um, and we, you know, we were just talking, chatting. I noticed the guy, he came up on the, on the stage and he went over there, never will forget, he never went over there where Creflo was sitting and he got on his hands and knees and he, and he put his, his, he bowed down on the chair and I think he was trying to get the anointing. I can't imagine what else he was, was trying to get. I mean, he was just, you know, Chris Creflo had gone. Did I tell you, the, empty, it was, the chair was empty. Okay, he, he was gone. Okay, he, he came in there, and he put, he was about, he had his hands on the chair and was just praying. And see, <laughs> I want you to know why I share that story. It is, you are anointed. Huh? See, you don't have to get the, you don't get the anointing from somebody. Didn't Pastor Gary teach, I didn't hear his message, but he talked about you anointed. See, the anointing that you uh, uh, received of him abides in you. Huh? You don't have to get some residue of something, that's of a chair somebody sat in. See, that's old covenant thinking. Where the, this whole trickle down, don't even get me started on that. This whole trickle down anointing thing comes from the old covenant. Like you got to get it from a prophet. But you got to understand that was a different dif dispensation and the Holy Spirit didn't live in them. Under grace, you have an anointing yourself. It may not be to do what Creflo does, but you have your own anointing. To enable you to do what God has called you to do. You graced for something. Let's partake of the bread together. Let's see him on that cross. Looking unto Jesus. Some of y'all got that, that headache's gone. Let us know in the comment section. That headache's gone. That some of y'all made me sleep already. At the, <laughs> from that is, don't don't sleep yet. Wait till tonight. 
<laughs> Some of y'all might have fell off to sleep because of that word he got. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I meant tonight you sleep good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you can sleep this afternoon. I don't mind. But you know that's a serious thing when you can't sleep. It's a horrible thing. Thank you. I mean, God will bring some, make some stuff happen for you that you, you don't even like, you don't even remember you had it anymore. Carla was asking me, um, asking me about a few days ago, how's your knee doing? Because I, ha I had some trouble with, with my knee, I think a couple of years ago. I don't even remember when it was. I had, to, I had to think about what she was talking about. Because I don't even remember. And, and, but at the time, <laughs> it was messing with me. I don't even know where it came from. But all I know is it's gone. And it, it caused me to just be thankful. Because God will do a work in you. You don't even forget you had the problem. I mean, you forget, you forget you ever had it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the power of the Word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, for, thank you for your blood that cleansed us from all of our sins, past, present, and future. Go ahead and receive the cup today. Remember him. It is finished. Say, I am. I am. Greatly blessed. Highly favored, highly favored, deeply loved, deeply loved and, totally and totally righteous, and I'm destined to reign, destined to reign. Because, of Jesus. because of Jesus. Is somebody sneaking up here on me? Uh, remember, uh, bi our Bible course is uh, extended, 50% uh, off extended to the end of the day today um, um, till like in the morning. Okay, so uh, just make sure you get in on that. Um, come on in. The water's fine in the class. It's going to be fun. We've got a private Facebook page set up for you. Once you sign up, you get instructions about that. All right? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I just was reminded to share this, and um, it leads right into what Pastor just ended with, if you're talking about how his knee. And earlier this week, um, I woke up reminded of something that um, God protected me from. And, and as I was sitting there, the Holy Spirit prompted me to share it with you because what it did, it helped me to be um, thankful for where I am and what I know God is doing with me and in, 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 and in me. And so um, when we were uh, living in Tulsa, I remember going to a furniture store and I was, it was about to be pastor's birthday, similar to around this time. And I believe the Holy Spirit just brought it up around this time. And um, um, I went into a gr uh, furniture store, and he was wanting a desk. It was a, the desk he wanted. It wanted he just wanted a, uh, just a wide span desk with no extras and all that. So I just started looking, and I had gone to this furniture store, and it was on a, uh, a busy street, so it wasn't anything stuck, uh, tucked back. And so as I went into the furniture store, um, it has some very nice things, and um, the gentleman walked up and asked, how could he help? So as I uh, explained to him what I was looking for, he took me back to the desk, and I didn't see it. And so he said, we do have some more desks, and I can show you where those are. And so I said, okay, great. So as I began to walk with him, he went down a couple of stairs and opened this door, and it was pitch black. And as he walked into the room, the only thing I could see were his eyes. And as I began to walk toward that door, I kid you not, it was almost as if a wall stopped me. And I just, I just came to a complete stop. Now, I, you know, I was young and very naive, but at that point, I knew I wasn't supposed to go down them stairs. <laughs> and I just remember turning around and walking out so rapidly. And this week, when that was brought to my attention, it made me angry, but it made me so thankful. And I began to think about where, what's happening today. And I was like, I know that the enemy, I was like, I just began to rejoice 
-hmm. for where God has brought us and kept me. And, and, and it's like that because the enemy will try to make you, um, will bring back things that make you feel like, you know, this should have happened. But no, God's hand is on your life. Yeah. And begin to thank him for the victories in your life. Because if he's brought you this far, he will continue to carry you and fulfill what he needs to do in your life. So don't get, because I, I just got really heavy about that and almost a little fearful that that almost happened. Can you, you know, you think about things that almost happened? Mm. Well, don't stay there. No, just give God praise and thank him that it didn't. And then in the situation, know that greater things of God is coming and there's nothing the enemy can do to stop it. Amen. So I wanted to share that. I don't know who it's for why, and who it would encourage and bless, but it blesses me and reminds me of the goodness of God in this hand of protection. Amen. 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 Stand up. Y'all have a great week.